GTA Online gets a new story uh, starting that was released a few days ago. Mm-hmm. Yep, I heard about that. They obviously excuse, but uh, yeah, I also hear that the new story. Uh, I think you mentioned this to me, if I recall correctly. If not, then I guess I've researched it further. That Dr. Dre and uh, Lamar will team up. So Dr. Dre is a real character, a real person. I think it's Dr. Dre and Franklin. Yeah, Dr. Dre. Fr- okay, okay. You're right. It's Fred Franklin. But Dr. Dre is an actual rapper in real life. He's a producer for Eminem's music back in the 2000s. So, right. Um, you know, to those that want to know why, who's Dr. Dre, that's, he was a rapper and now a producer for many years now. And he's going through a certain divorce with one of his wives he had, his most recent um, uh, wife. So that's what I hear from uh, someone by the name of O'Shea. Just keep it short. So. Okay, well, uh, this is the um, article. It says, uh, Franklin and Dr. Dre star in the contract, a new update for Grand Theft Auto Online. Uh, GTA Online is getting a new story-driven adventure starring Franklin, one of the protagonist from GTA 5. Uh, the contract catches up with the master of Yee Yee haircuts and tosses Dr. Dre into the mix for what looks to be a wild adventure. The contract is a free update that takes place a few years after the events of GTA 5. After knocking over the Union de- Depository, Franklin has founded his own celebrity solutions agency. F. Clinton and partner, his business aims to help Vinewood's rich and famous solve their first world problems and Franklin needs a partner and a major client to get it off the ground. That partner, of course, is you, and you're hooked up with Franklin thanks to a mutual contact, Lamar Davis, best friend, internet meme, and now aspiring cannabis entrepreneur. DJ Pooh also reaches out to Franklin to connect him to the perfect client, Dr. Dre. You see, Dre lost his phone en route to Cayo Perico and contains his unreleased music. The phone has fallen into the wrong hands, giving Clinton and partner the perfect job to make a name for themselves. Rockstar says the ridiculous adventure unfolds across Franklin's old Los Santos stopping ground to FIB offices to rowdy mansion parties. In addition to teaming with Franklin, you'll partner with Chop the Dog and Hacker Amani to recover Dr. Dre's phone and prevent his fresh beats from being leaked to the world. The contract launches in GTA Online on December 15th, and Rockstar promises to share more details in the coming days. The publisher is already teasing new weapons and vehicles alongside the new radio station, and first of their kind updates to existing stations. Yes, that includes exclusive new music from Dr. Dre himself. Mm. This probably explains Snoop Dogg's comment from October about Dr. Dre working on new music for, quote, the GTA game that's coming out, end quote. Uh, as a reminder, this uh, this is something different. GTA Online is shutting down on PlayStation and Xbox 360 on December 16th. Hmm. So a lot to un- a lot to unpack there. Yeah, you, you want me to talk about it a little more about this uh, yeah, shutdown? I, I'd love to talk about it. I mean, like uh, first, I'll be first. I'll, if you want me to do it first, that is. All right. So um. Yes, as I said, that Dr. Dre, I heard like he's trying to make a, some sort of comeback, and I guess his wife, her his third or second wife that he was with as of like last month or two, I guess it kind of brought him back into the spotlight. So whatever happened with him and the music music for the six GTA gig, GTA Six, as well as for GTA Online, then that's a good thing then, and uh, you know he's he's taking not taking advantage of it, but at the right place at the right time, it all comes to fruition, and you know, it's all in for Dr. Dre. You know, he may not—he may be old to most of the rapping community, the ones that um, listen to raps and stuff. Most of the time, like Lil Wayne, Nicki Minaj, Jay Z. Uh, Jay Z is old and up in age as well, but Nicki Minaj and uh, Lil Wayne, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Montana, uh, Future, all these rappers. You know, they have to respect Dr. Dre to some extent for doing this because we never heard of Dr. Dre in how many years since uh, with Eminem collaboration you remember the, that song Guilty Conscious right when we saw that yep. together, together we saw that in our, uh, at your place many when we were teenagers and it was funny right. as hell to see this it was like the the, the, the scene where 
uh, the cup, this 15 year old with the 22 year old, and it was like a construction job that she did and stuff like that with, his, with the wife and all. I was like, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> you, you said you said that music video was kind of like the Matrix. <laughs> I remember. I remember that. <laughs> It sounds true, though. I think I remember saying that to you <laughs> watching it. <laughs> oh, those were good times of uh, rats. Yeah, and Dr. Dre, he's been doing some things, but, like, I mean, he he doesn't, uh, I maybe it worked to his advantage. He doesn't release as, um, at least during Eminem's uh, career, he didn't release as many solo uh Albums. albums as someone like Eminem or 50 Cent or G Unit, you know, he was really it was really rare when uh, something came, of his came out. <laughs> so, um, so uh, yeah, um, this uh, and listen, I love updates to new games. This is going to be free. Um, so yeah, this I I could just imagine what I could just imagine the trouble you're gonna get into in this adventure as Franklin or as Lamar, whichever one you play as. We should have a Christmas uh, 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 stream of uh, GTA Online. You and I, um, Triple J. I don't have GTA. Uh, well, I don't have G- I don't even have a copy of GTA Five. All right, was New the- Year's. Well, I'll give you I'll give you some money to get the, the discount or gift it to you. <laughs> Well, it's coming out New Year's, have a great time and play it together and show the show off the new features of Doctor Dre's music and such. So that would be that would be cool to play. Um, the thing is, um, and I guess GTA Five for Xbox One can't be that uh, can't be that um, the expensive. Cheap, the cheapest on, on off sale was like thirty five thirty dollars with the shot card. I got mine for about. Fifty dollars, about forty-five dollars, with the shot car back in twenty eighteen. So, oh wow, I, I would expect cheapest. I would expect it to be a lot cheaper because keep in mind this game came out in twenty thirteen. But don't forget, there's an like Xbox One version of an upgrade to it. Yeah. So they had they actually had to uh, have sales. The recent sales, as of the last year, year before, and this year especially, uh, was around fifteen twenty dollars with the shot car, about twenty five dollars. So it's not that bad. Gotta try to make money off of it still. GTA Online, right? Also five. So. Well, I mean, you know, um, you know, it sounds it sounds like a great adventure. I would love to play it. I don't have GTA Five, um, but one thing that I've been kind of avoiding, I'll bring it up now, is them shutting down the online update. Is is shutting down online basically for PS Five for PS Three and Xbox Three Sixty. Now, before anyone starts, yes, I know they're old systems, but think about it in 2013. Xbox One and PS4 were not out yet. If you bought it on release day for PS3 and Xbox 360, you still paid $60 for the game. And now it's like, oh, it went on the old hardware, although that was the only hardware it was out on when it first came out. So if you don't have it on the new hardware, sucks to be you, online turned off. That's, That's one thing I don't agree with. It's like couldn't they? It couldn't they have kept online going? Because you know, it, I mean, what you, you're punishing people for who were so hyped to play your game that they that they wanted to try it out on day one. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, Xbox One and PS4, if I'm not mistaken, came out in 2014. Yeah, but Holiday, later. Uh, time, 2014. You know, uh, actually, and, no, it's 2013 in November that came out PS4 and Xbox One, remember? Because mm-hmm. GTA came out in September of 2013. I was there at the GameStop in 2013 in September. And, and it was October 2013. Uh, that was that was when GTA 5 was released. You serious? On this not September? It was, nope, it was October. Okay, October then. I'm sorry, guys. Excuse me. It just feels like it was different because everyone was there in my town to, to get the their copy in person. Back then, this is like when Amazon was just rising to the ranks of uh, online shopping. So everyone was going to the source first, and then now for the last five years, everything's online. Digital. Well, what was it so. It seems September. Hold on, let me check. I uh, <laughs> can. I, I could have sworn it's uh, you know, September 2013. 
I remember it was originally supposed to be April. Yeah, of it was 20. September 17, 2013. I was right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, so the online came out in October. That's what I was thinking of. Yes, okay. Because I remember when the when if when Grand Theft Auto V first came out, the online mode wasn't ready yet. And it was on PS3 and Xbox 360. And it was only on those systems. So I'm kind of feeling like, well, you know, people play, you know, it's not like it's not like uh, the PS3 and Xbox 360 uh, copies were budget versions. Of course. You know, people paid full price for those versions. Can't you just keep online going for those games? You know, no one's, I mean, you know, people who aren't, who don't have a lot of money, they didn't buy it for PS3 and then PS4 or Xbox One 360 and then buy it again for Xbox One. That's correct. As a matter of fact, I remember the big situ- the big thing was, it's like, well, yeah, if you don't care about uh, graphical upgrades, there's no reason to buy it again. Of course not. Yeah, that's how I felt, too. It's like, okay, Xbox One and the PS4 coming out two months later, three months later, after the September release of the 360 and PS3. No big deal, yeah. right? And also, we have until 2025 until the Xbox One is uh, stopped updated. So they know that they're transitioning, but it's too early, I believe, because people still play it online on the 360 years. Hell, there's even people, if I want to change the topic a bit, there's some people playing uh, Call of Duty uh, 3 or Call of Duty World at War back in a game that came out back in 2012, 2011, if not 2009. You know, 2008 maybe. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how are you going to take everything for these gamers who can't afford to get an Xbox One still or a PS4 still? You know, there are yeah. people out there who still can't afford to. They live in homes that are, like, uh, low-budgeted or low-income, whatever. Like, I, I used to live in those conditions where it's like, you know, you live within your means and stuff. You can't buy whatever you want to buy. So, I live, I still live, I mean, I was born and raised here where I live, in, in here in Queens. But still, like, the the way things were back then was like, you know, you had to make sure you get money in your pocket to pay for your bills and such. Now it's like, it's like every surplus, you know, everything's been centralized in a sense, you know, so that's a good thing. But uh, back then, in the 1990s of uh, 2000 with, with GTA 3, San Andreas, and Vice City, you aren't even lucky to get San Andreas if you're lucky. Out, well, out of all two others, because my mom wanted me to work. So imagine the teenagers at the time, or teenagers now, who can afford to get these. They finally got the game back in. Uh, when they were kids, the GTA 5, but by the time they reached like 17, 18 years old, they still can't get that new game of PS4, Xbox One version yet because they haven't got a chance to work yet because of the economy. So I know the feeling. I really do from these guys. So. Yeah, so, and especially on a time like today where inflation is, you know, hurting a lot of people, um, it's just, uh, it's it's really it's really a, it's just really a problem you know if it was the beginning of if it was the beginning of 2021 that'd be a different story things were actually starting to get better then mm-hmm. of course we had different of course we had, we hadn't transitioned to the joke in office yet but uh, but uh, <laughs> but I digress um, but any but you know at the beginning of 2021 I have to say it looked like things were returning back to normal um, whether Republicans and Democrats liked it or not. Uh, you know, uh, my writing job was starting to have uh, more um, frequent work. Uh, I, I'll, I'll tell the story. The writing, the website uh, where I get all my writing jobs from, uh, I remember I checked, like, when right when the pandemic began. It was sometime in March, second, third week of March, and uh, they have, like, pages of assignments, page one, page two, page three. Um, on any normal day, there'd be, like, 14, 16, 18 pages of jobs to pick. Because, you know, if jobs didn't, weren't claimed by someone, they stayed on there. Mm-hmm. So I, so on March, you know, right at the beginning of the pandemic, um, when it started to hit the United States hard, you know, when WWE and All Elite Wrestling had to start... Uh, performing in empty arenas I'm talking, you know, because it hit other countries first before it hit the United States Yes. Um, I went to my writing job and there were three pages of jobs hmm. page three had one job on it 
and page two, the only reason it had uh, like ten jobs on it, it was the same. It was the same from the same person about the same thing. A blog post about some mobile game. Well, I didn't play that mobile game, so I can't do any of these. So I was stuck with page one, and it was and it was really hard to find jobs. It was the beginning of the uh, pandemic, or at least the beginning of the pandemic in the United States. You know, this is before lockdowns happened, or maybe right after lockdowns happened. Uh, back when we believed two weeks was all we would have to lock down for. Yeah. Um, and now, we're, and now, uh, but like in February of this year, uh, it looked like things were getting back. Things were getting better. I was finding more stuff to do, more jobs to do, and now it's it's back to what it was last year. Mm-hmm. Now holidays are partially to pay, are partially uh, to blame for that. You know everything everything wraps down around the holidays. Yes. Um, but you know at, at the same time, you know the website uh, that I used to test um, websites for, I also made money off that. They haven't had a job. They haven't even had a questionnaire for me to fill out like in the last three months. Um, but then again, in this economy, you know, you would earn ten dollars if you tried out the website. I'm sure the company that uh, user testing that you paid the website, I'm sure they made at least ten dollars, if not more, to host your website so someone could try it out. You know, how many people have money? That kind of money nowadays to have someone give a review of their website. Mm-hmm. You know, that people are looking at that twenty twenty five dollars and they're saying, I have to put this towards my grocery bill or I have to put this towards this bill or that bill. I can't, you know. Yeah. And it's... And, um... So, that, that's, that's actually two things that hurt me because I... Um, like, I can... I make, like, a... I make uh, some money off user testing, and then with my writing job, you know, it was it was something, it, it, you know. But uh, the way things th- the way things have been, uh, and now and and I just feel like Rockstar didn't take that into account because, you know, uh, if you bought Grand Theft Auto Five and you didn't care about graphics like I didn't, yeah, you you know this you release this you release the game on a console on its way out. You should still support that game. I know, you know, because not everyone has the money to just go out and buy it for PS4 and Xbox One. And those game passes and Xbox subscriptions are, are standalone, like, let alone, like, like you have still have to pay, if you want to play online, you still got to pay $50, $60, $70 a year, depending on what country you're in, to pay for the, the, the at least at least an Xbox Gold. We're not talking about Game Pass. We're not talking about Ultra Pass. We're talking about just a simple gold membership. They have to run the yeah. account for that too because now it's like they can't play that game on the, on the 360 and PS3 days. Oh, you know, PS3, it was free back then, but still. Now you got to pay it oh, for every console now. Every console has a subscription service. So now it's like you only play the story mode if you're on the 360 um, game console or such and such. Or even on PS on PS4 Xbox One still because you only can do so, only for so much internet or only for so much um, what's that called uh, subscription services. So it's one thing to have the internet; it's another thing to pay for another subscription for in order to play the game online on Xbox 360, PS4 now. So it's kind of like you know you're, you're killing people that literally, but you're killing the people's uh, ambition to buy the next game because. Now it's like, why should I? Oh, sure, there are sales. There were sales up to the cheapest one I saw so far was twenty dollars without the Game Shark card and twenty five with the Game Shark card, something like that. It was some kind of pricing. I mean, but hopefully next year when I transition further, further mm-hmm. into uh, the AP, Xbox Series and the mm-hmm. PS Five, now they have to literally put at discounted prices, like beyond beyond the Yin Yang. Like you gotta be like cheap as hell. Not cheap myself as a company, but make things so cheap that they have to buy the PS4 and Xbox One versions, you know? Right. Because people still live in, like, you know, lowly conditions or low income conditions. Like, I can understand the feeling because I work, like I said, I just, I worked during when I was 17. And by the time 
Oh, it was like I, I worked temporarily, or I actually did some chores for other people. I don't remember the exact details, but I know for a fact that I bought San Andreas in December of 2004. So, and for the first time I played it, I played nine hours straight of that game. And so it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it was the, one of the best games I played back then. That's how the, the immersion I wanted to be, where you play hours upon hours, you lose track of time. I can't do that as I used to uh, with games of today. Maybe, maybe I can. I can, um, maybe not game of today, uh, like, the only game I've actually played today was Saints Row 2, um, because yeah. I never beat the first two Saints Row games, just three and four I beat, um, and Get Out of Hell, Ugh. Get Out of well, Hell? I'm sorry? That, yeah, that was supposed to be the fifth, that was supposed to be, like, the fifth game, but it just was not as good as the original, as the others, hmm. um, uh, Saint Row Get Out of Hell was uh, basically Saint Row Five, yeah. Where Johnny Gat and the FBI lady, I think her first name was Kenzie, um, got tran got uh, transport got um, sucked up in a portal that took them to hell. Oh yeah. So, um, basically, Johnny Gat and Kenzie have to team up with a uh, few people. Um, and basically uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil. And the whole reason they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the devil is because the devil wants the leader of the saints to marry his daughter. Oh. And Johnny and Kenzie are there to uh, basically rescue the saints' leader. Which well, he was the president of the United States at one point, right? Yeah. <laughs> It was, it was. I mean, there was a funny part in Get Out of Hell, but the whole reason I sighed when I brought that up is, uh, like, I tried playing it because they offered it, I think, Games with Gold at one point, so obviously I downloaded it, but, like, then there were glitches that were keeping me from continuing, because I couldn't get to a part that I had to get to, and I'm just like, I didn't give up on this before because of glitches, I gave up before because, you know, the challenge got to me because I was like near the end of the game you know why does this have glitches now <laughs> um, but anyway yeah so it's I just I just don't think Rockstar or other companies is basically taking into account the crappy economy that we're in yeah and now that Rockstar uh, all together the game, the game companies as an industry I understand they're trying to make money during this pandemic Especially last year, between the months of, of February and December, specifically, because they tried to release the, the Xbox uh, series and the PS5 for the, for the holiday of 2020. They know that's a bad idea. They heard about this thing months ago. I mean, if they want, if, let's, let's, let's put this on the insider job style, style of the format. There was reports saying that Donald Trump passed a law to prevent pandemics like this to start back in of uh, January 2019. So if they heard about this, they should have been like, okay, maybe, just maybe, we should plan ahead for 2021 release and fix everything up for 2020. That's it. They can't do that. It's all about the money. And I like money. I like to use money. I help, it helps me maintain my, my, my bills, pay off and stuff. Yes, I admit that, but in the end, you know, let's we're, let's have some integrity. Let's have some backbone. Let's have some decency with these uh, the way we, we distribute games to us gamers. You know, right? I mean, I mean, the, the young the young crowd don't see that, or well, we didn't see that when we were kids because there was no one there to see the the, the nonsense. And even if Blizzard and Activision, as one example, had their escapade with the sexual harassment stuff back in the late nineteen nineties and two thousands. It wasn't a big deal. It was like a whatever to most gamers. We weren't that political. We cared about right. you giving out the product, he give us a decent product, and that's it. And that's what happened <laughs> until 2010, 2014, between the, the, t the transitioning from you know guys like Cliff Blinsky and Reggie and Era Aqua, of the, who was the, the Nintendo president at the time, to now Nina Sarkeesian, Zoe Quinn, uh, uh, whatever her name was that ran for Congress, 
and also you gotta include other SJWs out there that no name SJWs, the, the blue check marks of Twitter. You know, you see this, it's just getting worse with that, with what's yeah. going on. So, bottom line, you know, I, I just, I just think the game companies are being unfair um, to, to, to their consumers. You know, if, if, if we, if we were back in 2019 and everyone was making more money than they had any time before, fine. But we're not in that situation now. Anyway, I'm ready to move on. Are you? Yes, I am.